So a little bit more of a neutral fight here. Hamla isn't willing to just grip up immediately. He, there's a little bit more hesitation in how he approaches this situation, which is warranted against an opponent like Leandro. And Leandro likes to kind of sit back um, on his heels like this. And I think he does this to make it look like he's going to pull guard. And he like steps back sometimes and then immediately shoots that big double leg where he like opens his arms and like grabs people's legs and double legs them. It's like totally the wrong way to do a double leg, but it works on everyone, including me. <laughs> he double legged me so so badly one time. Did uh did I ever tell you what Buchecha said they call that double leg? What no? What do they call it? When Buchecha was on our show, he said they call it the bar double leg because it's like a double leg someone shoots in a bar fight. Right. Yeah. It totally makes sense. It like doesn't look like it should work, but it does. I'm not. That's just Leandro. His yeah. entire game looks like that. It doesn't look like it should work, but it works. So. Leandro just has grips. He doesn't really care. He just pulls off anything, really, it seems like. But he has collar sleeve as well. Immediately gets this ankle control. Leandro looks a lot lighter in this. So I, he was probably fighting middleweight this year, or what? Middle heavy, he, I think. I think that they were both middle heavy in this division. Okay, so it's the it's the division final? Yeah. But you'll notice that Homolo is immediately not in his knee cut position. So that means Leandro won the micro battle there to establish position because Homolo could have potentially stepped across like we saw him step across with Jackson if he had played this neutral game a little bit better. But Leandro's incredibly good at these kind of like little micro positions to get to where he wants to be rather than where his opponent wants him to be. So he's got this deep grip hugging his own thigh. This kind of makes it so you don't have to keep a De La Hiva hook super engaged. And then usually from here we'll see Leandro look for far side sleeve control and then try and set up his sort of single leg exposition. And Homo's doing that thing where he controls the cross grip sleeve or a same side sleeve grip as just an extra balance point and at the same time not letting Leandro do much with that hand. So he's controlling that hand to stop Leandro from getting grips. But then he relinquishes it for a collar but keeps making sure that he breaks that grip and doesn't let Leandro get anything too substantial. He constantly is fighting this one hand that Leandro's reaching for, switching between right hand and left hand, never letting him get a strong grip. Every time he gets a collar grip, he re he resets, breaks the grip, resets, breaks the grip, over and over. You see, that's like 13 grip breaks in 10 seconds. Another one, break the grip again. Another one, break the grip, Homlo. Again, there it is. Yeah, yeah, one more time. It's deep. Wait, he's going to break the grip again. There it is. One more time. All right. <laughs> oh, it's in the collar again? Break it again. Okay. <laughs> And that's a perfect example of how important grip breaks are. Everyone needs to do that. If someone puts a, a, a grip in your collar, you let go of everything and break it over and over and over again. Homlo just did that 20 times. There's a reason for that. It's not because he's OCD. It's because you have to do that because if you relinquish grips easily, people are going to throw you around. The grip fight dictates where the match goes. So every time that someone starts to get a secure grip – you'll see high-level guys immediately address it before proceeding to any of their own grips. And that's very important. And that is why he's been able to stay on top. And now Leandro's thinking, wait, maybe it's not a good idea to stay on bottom anymore. I couldn't secure my grips to set up my attack. And he starts scooting a little bit more and then shoots that double, which is amazing. Like, that was incredible. Uh, <laughs> it's like totally reverse direction to what he was trying to do. He's playing like flat on his back, De La Hiva, and then just starts backing up. Because he notices Homo is standing up straight and kind of thinking about a different style of attack. He probably thinks Leandro's going to try and get back to his guard again. But Leandro did something completely unexpected. He just shoots the double. Head down, closed his eyes. <laughs> just totally just went for it. Gets the two points, but Homo immediately turns it into a Uma Plata. Oh, man. If Leandro had just been able to, or if he had just been able to lock up that Uma Plata, that could have been a different story. But he managed it, Leandro manages to keep his face below the foot as much as possible. Never let him fully lock up the position. And now this left-hand grip that he has is very dangerous because back in these days, Leandro was a lot faster and would do more fast-style throw-by passing. I'm, I'm curious to see what kind of passing we'll see from Leandro today because it's definitely changed over the last couple, last three or four years to be a little bit more patient and he bides his time a little bit more. But he used to be very, very aggressive with his passing. He also kind of takes this sort of limp arm stance. You'll see his arms. He just lets them relax. Leandro never resists the arm control too much. He kind of just keeps him straight. But his hand placement is what keeps him safe. And you can kind of catch a glimpse of that right here. So if you look at Leandro's hand, most people would have their hand on the outside of Homlo's knee. 
So most people just grab here or here or something. And that would actually give Homolo better control with the spider grip. But you'll see Leandro's hand is actually on the inside of the thigh. So it's actually reaching to the inside of the thigh like this, cupping on the inside of the thigh. And that beats that that helps you against lasso controls that helps you against spider hooks you actually can't put a spider hook on effectively if someone puts their hand on the inside like this you're forced to play sort of a lasso and if you see to play an effective lasso you actually have to have your hand on the other side of your thigh so your leg has to be on the outside of your hand over your hand to actually throw an effective lasso over the arm but because it's on the inside it's not there's no effective guard recovery movement here with his right leg so this is sort of just a a good hand placement that beats a lot of normal guard recovery options that someone like Homo would be looking for. And it just makes it so he's not a threat from the Uma Plata or anything like that. There's no Uma Plata threat here. This is just really a great position for Leandro's hand. And he's not under threat. But Homo does have the other sleeve grip, and he starts. To, he tried to do that little knee position we saw earlier. And this is what we're going to see from Leandro a lot. Every time this leg extends... He's going to start trying to move to this side and do those throw-by passes. Or that's what he used to do. I would like to see it again, but I'm not sure if he, he was still doing that kind of style back in these days. So just one clean, surprising double leg could win this fight. It's just a surprise attack. Just changing up the strategy and doing something unexpected is so powerful sometimes. So a little bit of shin-to-shin -shin work from Homolo. But he's not really able to get leverage to get underneath Leandro right now. And I'm not sure exactly why that is. But it seems to be Leandro's blocking. Oh, there's that throw by that I was talking about. That And that's the uh, spider guard killer that I was talking about in the previous videos. Where if that leg gets extended. And then there's a very unique position where if you're they have a, a lasso on the other side. If you bring your hand to the inside of the thigh again with the opposite hand this time. It doesn't matter if they have a sleeve grip. You can still do a throw by. And this is something that I started. I stole from Leandro a long time ago at Purple Belt and Brown Belt. And I started killing people with this. Because everyone would put a spider hook on me. And I just put my hand on the inside. And just do this turn. And the way he does this turn is very interesting. It's right here. It's about to happen. So the elbow's tucked first. And then he's moving away. And he's like kind of pulling his body away for a second. And that's going to create a position where Homo kind of pulls him in a little bit more. And then he's going to step. His left foot's going to step right here. The right foot's going to be a little bit closer. And then his hips are going to be right in front of Homolo's knee. He's going to posture straight up. That's going to throw Homolo's leg across to the side here. And then the lasso that we saw on the other side, because his hand is here instead of on the outside of the hip, the lasso won't be a leverage point for Homolo to maintain the guard. So let's see if it plays out like that. Yep, just like that. So that step is very important. He backs away, and then right here you see the direction change. Homo's foot is free-floating so that he took the opportunity, steps in, and just shoulder shrugs that past. It does a good recovery, but it completely reset the position, killed Homolo's grips, and now he has to reset everything. He's got to try and get his, all his sleeve grips back. He's got to do it all over again. Ooh. And in the attempt, and that, that's when you do it. You break grips, and then you attack when they're searching for their grips again because if they don't have grips, their guard is weak. So a reset like that is very powerful because the second Leandro sees the opportunity, he goes for this diving knee cut. He gets the deep underhook on the right side. Homolo didn't have spider control anymore. This He needed this spider hook to maintain his guard that he was playing. And he manages to immediately pass. And look how this was a very shallow underhook. It wasn't deep around his back. He was just basically palming Homolo's armpit and tucking his elbow across the chest, which is a unique thing that... I, I first saw Leandro do this. It's sort of a shallow underhook where you tuck your own elbow in front. Really effective. Homo puts up a really good fight here. Pushing, recovers. Great. But this was the thing about Leandro that made him so dangerous back in the day. He wouldn't force these things. He would get the near pass. He'd get the advantage. And then he'd back out back to guard again. Do a grip reset. Shoot the flying knee cut. Or do the uh, throw by that we just saw. Or both. And it's kind of he just rinse and repeat that strategy. Flying knee cut to reset or uh, throw by to reset or fly a knee cut to reset and then he would do the opposite of what he just did to reset to actually attempt the pass so let's see if it happens again so he's got that left pants grip control Homo manages to get up underneath him I think we might see a sweep here actually nope so lasso on this side you can see uh, watch watch Leandro's hands here how he deals with lasso grips he does a lot of unique stuff here it does, it's not oh, always the same the, change the collar now oh yeah so now he's back to his uh, position here the Homolo guard. <clears throat> this should slow Leandro down for a minute, but now Leandro's up two with one advantage. So he, you can, depending on which Leandro shows up, 
this one advantage can carry him to the to the finish. Like <laughs> he can just stay here now because he knows if he gets swept, uh, Hamlo will have to score on him again. He'll have to score an advantage. So the ball's in Hamlo's court to be aggressive now, and Leandro has the op- the option and the luxury to kind of relax a little bit. Let's see how this plays out here. So again, I would be on the lookout for this throw by. It's there. If this grip breaks for a second, the throw by is there. So. We'll see how this plays out. This is a really strong grip, but I don't see Homlo threatening anything with it. I don't see him getting between Leandro's legs or creating the off balances, the the overhead sweeps. He kind of throws in a little bit of a shin to shin here, but it looks like Leandro's hand on the outside is blocking the shin to shin setups. Penalty for someone. Resetting. Look at this cross hook there. Uh oh, and then so yeah, so he tries to set something up here briefly. Leandro feels it. I think he pops this grip off, maybe. Yeah, so he popped that grip off. He snuck that right hand up. Watch this right hand here. It's right there right now, and then he reaches up right by his own ear, right there, and he kind of like popped it off. Or Hamilo let go at the same time. I'm not really sure. But then the second the grip breaks, look how Leandro initiates a passing action. That's because he understands that once the grip is broken, there's an immediate weakness that has to be taken advantage of right at that moment. And if he doesn't move right at that moment, Homolo will just get their grip back, and then they're back to a sort of stalemate position. So the second the grip breaks, we see action from Leandro. He just starts moving, just tries something, goes, and starts moving again. Throws, try, tries to throw by, tries to get into the position, and Homolo kind of weathers the storm, secures his grips again, and now the game starts again. The grip reset has to come, or a grip break happens, and then Leandro's going to try and take advantage of the opportunity. Beautiful little triangle setup with the shin to shin, I believe. So he's got the leg kind of in front of the knee. It comes down. Oh, it just goes to the outside, and he just shoots a clean triangle here. But this posture is so effective against triangles, especially with Leandro. <clears throat> and I would expect, because Leandro is on top, that Homlo is actually carrying most of the weight of this match and is probably getting a little bit more fatigued than Leandro because Leandro's just kind of sagging on him, just falling on him. Homolo has to do these big explosive redirections and pushes and leg extensions. That's a lot of effort. So I'm, I'm waiting again to see the next grip break opportunity, the grip reset, and then initiating into a pass. Let's see how it plays out here. Pausing. Homolo's really insistent on these grips. But there's the position. This hand on the inside here... There is an opportunity for the throw by again that we saw earlier, but I'm not sure if he's going to go for it. And I don't th- it's not going to work if the foot's on the inside. There it is. See, he goes for it again. And it worked. Yeah. So it's because of that hand in between hand in the crotch right here. Like this hand, it works because of this. And for whatever reason, you would think that when Leandro's hips go all the way over to this side that this leg would stop the the movement, but that it only would stop the movement if Leandro's hand was in front like this if he had this the lasso grip here with leandro's fist in this position it would work but because the fist is down here it just slides off his lower hamstring out into the the open area over here and then you can bring your hand up on the outside of the thigh which leandro does he actually puts his hand on the outside of the thigh on this side and it kind of just unwinds the position so let's see if we can do it slow and see it it's half the actual pass and half Homolo just feeling threatened and letting go of the sleeve. It's a unique pass because it has a psychological component. Because it's not like if you just hold on, you should be fine, but it feels like you have to let go, and that's usually what happens. So uh, we see the hand get into position. He's where he's gonna back up a little bit, and then right once that foot is clear from the thigh, so the foot comes out from between the legs, the hand comes starts weaving to the outside, getting ready to cup the thigh right here as he does this big throw. Okay, so he waited to have the foot come out. So Homolo's foot comes out, and that's the green light. So that's what I was looking for. What is the trigger that makes Homolo, or makes Leandro do the throw by? So there it was. That was the trigger. So the leg is giving him problems, giving him problems. He's maneuvering his hand slowly to the outside until Homolo takes the foot out. So he's slowly trying to degrade this control until Homolo decides to remove one of the controls, and that was the green light to go. So right when that foot comes out, 
boop, go. So that's that's timing. That wasn't that wasn't just happenstance. He didn't just decide to go then. He waited for the foot to come out, which is great. And that's why we do breakdowns because we can see little tricks like that. So that's an integral part of the actual pass. If I were to teach that pass now, I have to focus on that and be like, okay, this works because you move your hand to the outside and then we're waiting to, for them to remove their foot. And when they remove their foot, that's the green light to go. And it gives people uh, just a point of just reference. Like, okay, when do I do it? Well, you do it now. When their foot comes out, do it now, like that. And that's exactly what happens. And he lets go of the sleeve right there at the very end. Watch this. So as he does the throw by, throws by, really turns so that there's nothing for the foot to catch on except a little bit of the lapel here. It goes off to this side. Watch the left sleeve. Keeps the left sleeve. But you can see the lasso is no longer in play. The spider hook is no longer in play because it's falling off in this direction. It's just pushing on his chest. It's not enough to straight or bend the elbow and put that elbow at the right angle that the spider guard needs. He continues to turn, turn, turn. And then right here, the spider guard hook falls off because of the maneuver he just pulled off. And then Hamlet has to make a decision. Is he going to hold on to this sleeve or start pushing? And chances are he's going to start pushing. Yep, and there it goes. He he does this little trick where he reinforces uh, his own hip to do, thro do that leg throw by. And, man, that was a fantastic recovery. I would have liked to have seen him sweep there because it looked like he had an opportunity to just come up into a sweep. When he gets this upside-down close guard right there, he could have come up, but it was just too much chaos to really notice. And Leandro's looking real fast in this video. He doesn't move as fast now. This looks like a solid sweep position, though. Yeah. Double pants grips with the double foot press right in the upper thigh. That'll knock some people over really effectively. Awesome, awesome uh, guard recovery by Homolo. Many a lesser man would have fallen victim to that passing sequence. I'll tell you, I, I watched this match with Homolo before, and uh, he said looking back on it, he just wishes he would have focused on breaking uh, Leandro's right grip, right, 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 sleeve, uh, right hand grip right there, instead of trying to sweep with him having it. Yeah, that's a tough position. I, I usually just try and keep this leg into more of an X under the thigh to avoid this grip because if yeah. you do, yeah, give people that grip, it, it's going to stop you from coming up. And Kynan does this really well. If you watch Kynan in these positions, he always controls this top leg, and it's a really effective way to stop people, people from being able to finish sweeps. It's true. There's also not a ton you can do about it. I like to actually just re-invert towards the inside and turn it more into a waiter sweep style thing, and then that grip becomes a little bit more useless. Okay. Yeah, if you just switch the position and try and bring your knee like under their leg, yeah. Even if they keep the the pants grip, you can turn it into a waiter sweep and like see some opportunities there. But it's hard. It's like hard to mentally let go of this position because it should be so strong. Like it, you're in the best possible sweeping position, but the downside is that leg that that leg control. <clears throat> yeah, he's tr he's kind of trying to break the grip, but I, I'm not sure how he would break it. Even it's it's pretty tough if you just stay in this position. I don't see an easy way to break it without sacrificing your position on the, the ankle control. And you saw it, the second he let go, Leandro tried to yank his leg out. So he's yeah. aware of, of, of the, him reaching to break that grip. He wants Homolo to reach with that grip to break that grip so he can clear his leg. This should be a sweep here. Come on. Oh. He could have definitely gone into wheelbarrow position there, I feel like. But maybe not because of this pants grip. Not a lot of time left. I like, See, that, I like that waiter sweep idea from there. Yeah, it's one of the only options if they're really controlling that leg. you got to get underneath them in a slightly different way. But that's that's by no means a guarantee that it's going to result in something. Because this should result in something. Like This is a good sweeping position. There's no reason he can't sweep from here. It's just Leandro is Leandro. And he's got a crazy base. And he can just do weird stuff like this and just ride people out even though everything seems right. Like It doesn't make sense that... Wow, look at these positions he's putting him in. Yeah, he can't get him he can't get his base broken. And it's hard like for me, I would just grab a lapel here <laughs> and then lose anyways. But <laughs> Hamlo has some other options. I feel like he could uh, it's so tough. I think his right leg is so active, he could do this right here. He could somehow maybe bring this leg in and start trying to kick the hand off his pants with the right leg. But that would sacrifice a lot of his inside control of the actual X guard position. I think just turning it into a double leg as soon as possible would be great, but he can't because of that pants grip. And then he forces the reap. So he's got that to worry about. And at what point is Homo just going to try and get up? There it is. 
Come on. That was the off balance. If you could just take advantage of one of these off balance positions and really try and come up on top, but it seems like it's just going to get stalled out here. Yeah, why is it not working? <laughs> I mean, can you see why it's not working? I can't. It, I mean, other than the pants grip, I just feel like it shouldn't be as big of an issue, especially when he gets his foot in here like this. See, right there, he tried to switch to the sleeve grip. Yeah, but that's too risky because then he's going to take yeah. his foot out. All of this, all of this effort will have been for nothing if he does that. So there's a there's a hesitation component here that's very difficult to compensate for. This is just Leandro being Leandro and just having the best balance in the game, man. Seriously, it's just an incredible balance. Look at this. Look at these positions that Jaime was putting him in. Yeah, you don't see people stall from a a, a sweeping position, you know? Like, yeah. Look at this. And Leandro does that with worm guard too. Like, I have I'll have full worm guard on him, and he can just like not get swept from there. Oh, this this could have been it. Well, oh, he has the pants. Oh, but there's only Leand no time. But Leandro, I mean, he's a smart competitor though too. He knows if even if he gave up that sweep at the end, he still wins yeah, by an advantage. Of, true. Yeah, and like a lot of what he had to do there was not let Homolo score an advantage because maybe Homolo was looking for the advantage first. Like yeah. maybe there's some level chess going on where Homolo is looking for the advantage first and then wants to sweep. And he knows if he sweeps, that's not enough to win. So maybe that was a component in the hesitation as well, like trying to just create an off bounce to get the advantage first before he commits to the big sweep because he has to do two things there. Because if he just commits straight to the sweep and gets two, then he has to do a pass, a near pass as well, which is like asking yeah, a lot. Luck. You got a yeah, minute to luck. pass Leandro Lowe. Uh, he took the right approach to try and get the advantage first, maybe. Could have been anything, but Leandro's yeah. Leandro, and he's an enigma. It doesn't make sense, really, but he Leandro he does never it. let his hips get to the mat, though, so he couldn't have given up the advantage. Uh, there was one moment, but they were both flat, and so it was, yeah. like, kind of tough. But 